Okay, in today's tutorial, I'm going to do a another autumn scene, but in this scene, I'm going to have a waterfall feature as well as the kind of autumnal colours that are going to go through it. I apologise for the lighting setup. Um, I've just moved house and it's a bit sort of makeshift, the lighting uh, in the room at the moment, but I do intend to invest in some better lighting so it's not quite as distorted. If anyone that follows the colour codes that I'm going to put down in the description feels that the the image doesn't quite match up to the colours that they seem to get on their own screen. It could be partly due to the lighting in the room on this tutorial. It just might make it look a little bit different when you actually do it yourself. Having said that, I am going using Procreate. I've opened an A4 canvas. The colours that I've pre-selected are here and the colour codes for them are down in the description of the video. For anyone who's a patron of mine um, over at Patreon, there is a file that you can download for that as well. There is a link for that down in the description if you're interested, but otherwise you can get the codes for free. Go into the value section of Procreate, uh, punch in the hexadecimal codes, and then start to piece together the colours based on the codes that I've provided. So I'm going to use a variety of uh, different kind of brushes on this one. I normally would opt for using the airbrush, um, and perhaps put in the ten kind of textures manually. Having said that, it's quite a texture intensive kind of piece, this one. So I'm going to use the aid of some of the brushes, although they're not completely perfect necessarily. They just give you the idea of what texture can actually add to a piece of work. So one of the first textures I'm thinking of using is actually in the default brushes here on Procreate. If you go into the retro section, there is a brush called Rad. Now I've used this on a previous tutorial as well. And I'm just going to use this to create the sense of quite busy, quite messy kind of foliage in the background. So I'm going to go to my colours. I'm going to choose the first colour, which is this yellow. And this colour is going to be predominantly in the background. So I'm going to put the opacity to about half. Just create a kind of medium brush and then start to feel, or even a bigger brush actually, would look pretty good straight away. Now most of this is going to be hidden in the scene. It's just going to create noise and busyness through in the background there. And the vast majority of it is going to be obscured anyway. So I want to create some different layers, different strengths of yellow and white perhaps. So maybe the edges, you do really don't get hardly any of that white showing through. Maybe you get a little bit more focused in the center. This is really, most of this is not going to be seen. I'm just creating breaks here yeah, and a kind of textural quality. Now I'll come down to about this point and then I'm going to start feeding in kind of more features of the waterfall and the actual ground. So I don't really need to go beyond that point. So I can turn the opacity up a little bit more now and maybe turn the size of the brush down a little bit and just start to create more of this distinct yellow in places. I do want a whole variety of oranges and yellows coming in here. So then I'm going to move along to the next color. It is a warmer, darker orange. And I'm just going to be a little bit more careful with this. So I do want to start introducing quite a lot of, of this color as well. But I'm just going to think about the direction of this one. So I'm going to think about maybe kind of sweeping movements. So whenever you get branches that collect kind of foliage, you can have a branch obviously that will, won't typically go up and down. It will go off at an angle maybe. And then all the leaves will kind of correspond with that. So they're going to match and they're going to move in sort of sweeping movements across. Again, much of this is going to be obscured anyway. I'm going to keep adding different layers to this. So you don't have to be too precious at this point. It's really only later on that I'm going to start worrying about the actual sort of effect of some of the layers and the actual details. Okay, I'm going to move to the next colour along. I'm going to turn the size of the brush to about midpoint again. Again, it's, on, it's not the strongest, but it's a bit more than half. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to put it underneath this layer. And I feel like there's still lots of white in some of these areas. So I'm going to go to my yellow color again. I'm going to switch brushes to an airbrush. I still kind of, is always a useful fallback whenever you're doing a piece of work. And I'm just going to start maybe filling in some of the white patchy areas. I really don't want any of that white showing through in certain areas. So I want to shut down all the little white patchy areas there. And I want to just reserve some bits going through the very center there. Okay, so I'm going to come back to that. I will add more to that, but I may do it on a layer above instead. So I'm going to create another layer, and this time I'm going to put it above. And I'm going to use this layer. I'm going to go down. I'm going to start using some of these colors to start adding in the suggestion of trees now. So I think for this one, just for the general shape, I'm going to go to my airbrush. I'm going to pick a medium 
airbrush and I'm going to start placing in some trees this kind of area and I'm going to be having trees interfering with the space with the composition cutting through and because it's really quite a dark colour it's going to contrast really nicely with the scene. Perhaps I'll create a slightly bigger one, it's going to be more foreground. Maybe some over here. Because this is on a separate layer, if I want to do anything to this, this layer of trees to knock them back at all at any point, then I can do. But I'm just trying to get a general sense of them in from the very start. So I'm going to have a slight kind of strange shape on the, the bottom of these, like it's really emerging, sprouting out from between rocks in some areas. And then some of them are going to be more distant trees, sort of higher up in the, the actual scene, maybe at the top of the rocks. Admittedly, I've not added the rocks yet, so you just have to use your imagination a little bit of where the, the rocks may end up being. But it hopefully will start to make sense in a short while. I'm just tracing areas where the trees might actually be. It's a good kind of organic way to do it. Okay, so I'm going to leave that layer alone for the moment. I'm going to create another layer. And with this layer, as I was just saying, I'm going to start creating some kind of rock shapes. Now, I've got a variety of different colors here. Now, in terms of how I pick colors, I have found a selection of photographs of this type of subject matter. What you do is you put them into the, the actual app and then you select the colors by going onto a section, long pressing on the color, and you see the top half of the circle changes that color. When you let go, it's now with the color that you selected. So I do that, and then I start to build up a color palette that way. So this picture is not a copy from a photograph, but it has been influenced by a variety of photographs that I've actually used. I've chosen some of the colors that I think are relevant, and then I've just pieced them together here. So hopefully it will all start to make sense when I piece it together. Nothing's guaranteed in, in art, but Usually more often than not, things tend to sort of pull together towards the end anyway. Sometimes I do have complete disasters. Hopefully today is not going to be one of those times. <laughs> Although to be fair, the chances are if it is one of those disasters, then maybe I wouldn't upload it. I don't know, maybe one of these days I will upload um, a video where things have gone completely wrong just to show you that it does happen. Um, maybe something that might be actually educational in itself, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm brave enough to do that really. I think I'll just stick for the main part, putting up images that are generally successful and have actually worked. So I'm creating a bit of the, the kind of top of the scene here. So it's not quite a horizon. I suppose it is in a sense. It's the, the top where the land stops and then the sky, if you like, begin or begins. But it's not quite the traditional kind of horizon point you might expect in some scenes. So I'm just using this first colour, the bottom layers. I'm still using the medium airbrush and I'm just trying to place in some of the suggestion of rocks now. It's a fairly similar colour to the, the colour of the trees, but it's different enough to still be able to see there is a difference. So um, I can start to add highlights to the different subject matter in a little while, and it should further push them further apart and make them look more different. So I'm going to start piecing in some big slabs of rock, perhaps, that are in this scene. I'm not being too neat at this point. It's not really necessary. You're just trying to, or I'm just trying to map in a sense of composition, trying to imagine where the water may start to cascade down into the scene. So maybe a rock obscuring the base of the tree here, so you don't quite get to see. Maybe a smaller rock down here. I don't know, maybe a big rock here. Another rock here, perhaps. Maybe layers to this, so you've got kind of steps to it. Maybe another rock in this area. Maybe, yeah, I'm just going to start putting in some rocks generally. I can figure out where the water's going to go afterwards. Now you're going to really, unless you want to copy this exactly as I'm showing you, um, this is kind of the area where you might want to play around, experiment with different rock shapes. We're just getting sort of big, bolder sized rocks in at this point. The shapes overall are undecided, depends on what highlights you're going to put on them. But just to begin with, I'm just having a play around with some different shapes and kind of see what emerges. Okay, so it's almost like we've got a series of steps here. And when I start to add the water, I may create breaks with the water. It may start to cascade over certain areas. So then it creates gaps between the rock areas. 
but in terms of like the background kind of suggestion I'm quite happy with that. And what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go back down to that bottom layer which was a layer I used to add a bit more of the soft kind of yellows in the background and I'm going to use it as well to add a really dark colour. Now, now you probably can't see it very well but at the end of this colour selection there is actually a dark a very dark kind of blue colour. Now most of this is again is not going to be seen it's just going to create contrast in fact that's not even dark enough so what I will do I'm going to create an, an even blacker version I don't really want totally solid black maybe I'll go for a slightly warmer black in fact so I'm going to add this onto the the colors as well so I'll put it on the end of this one so it is there now you can barely see it but I, I know it's there and I'm going to use this on that layer and it's going to be important because it's going to create the kind of gaps and the the shadows so I don't want it to be white, it's a little bit of a distraction seeing all that white. And I am going to have to go and add shadows and dark areas in there as well. So I might as well put them in there to begin with. So it creates a real separation now between the, the background, the sky areas or the top, the foliage and the bottom section. Now things are all over the place in terms of the trees, they're not the kind of colour they're going to be. But I'm just starting to place things in with a, with a kind of base colour. So I think at this point I'm going to move along to one of my other rock colours and I'm going to start using this colour on a layer that I'm going to put on top. I'm going to start using a variety of the colours that I have here and perhaps even one or two of the other colours just to start to create the shape and the general overall effect of the rocks themselves. So obviously there's going to be more light from above so we're going to get more of the highlights on the top of the rocks in a general sense but we don't want to lose some of the kind of angular facets of the rock. So I'm trying to not make them too rounded. I want some kind of jarring shapes. Quite angular forms that are cutting into the composition overall. I'm going to move along back up to one of these other colours that I've put here kind of for the trees, but some of them will double up for the rocks as well. So I've gone to the second colour along on this middle set of colours. It is a much lighter kind of grey colour. Turn the size of the brush down. I'm going to start using this just to create some real highlights on top of these rocks. So I'm going to use a variety of methods to create texture. Some of it might be manually, a little bit like what I'm doing now. Then at other times I'm going to use slightly more textured brushes too. So I'm just starting to use this just to try and create some more of these edges, further help create those angles. Now, especially when we come down to this level, I guess it's more likely they've had water on the top of these rocks. Uh, maybe the spray and anything else is, leaves the top of the rocks kind of reflective and therefore any light that's in the sky is going to reflect off these most. So I guess we're going to have more light on the top of these ones than perhaps the ones at the edge. Okay, so I've got some angular formations in there. I'm going to keep working on that. I think that I may turn to some other colours and brushes now. So before I do any more to the kind of rocks, I think I need to get all the elements kind of in the positions that I want them. So I'm going to move to the, the colours where I'm, I'm considering putting the water. I've got white and I've got a, a very pale blue and I've got a couple of darker blues. I think I'm going to go for not the darkest blue, but the next one. And I'm going to go back to my airbrush. Medium airbrush is fine. Turn the opacity of it down and I have a sort of relatively small brush. And I'm just going to start placing on this new layer. It's got nothing else on it so far. I'm just going to start thinking about where I want the cascading water to be. So you're not going to have it going up and down here. It's going to be flat and then stepping down. It may sort of spill around some of the rocks, but you know, you just got to be careful with that water line if you get any flattening out at all. So I may have some coming around here, for example, in this section. It's going to cascade down here, I think. Maybe this rock is going to jut out, but it's going to cascade down and around it generally. Maybe then it gets to this rock. There's going to be a slight flattening out here. Again, maybe another kind of spilling out of a corner here. Maybe this section here where it starts to spill down. Maybe a general kind of flattening in this area. And then another kind of spilling down in this area. So I'm only kind of sketching it in roughly. There's really a lot of rough details on this particular piece until we get a little bit further along. So maybe we can imagine that the water's also coming along somehow down in this section. I might need to make that a little bit lower to make that work, but we've got some water cascading down there. So I can go to my slightly lighter blue this time. 
Turn the size of the brush down, maybe the opacity down too. And I'm really going to start carefully now creating some kind of soft sense that the water is spilling down here. So I don't want to complete, I don't want to fill it in like this. I'm creating just kind of soft movement down. I guess really the effect is going to be similar to a long exposure because when I've been looking at photographic sort of subject matter, or this kind of subject matter in photographic form, this is the only way that you're really generally going to see it. It looks more beautiful to see it as a long exposure. You get really soft kind of waterfall features and that's the, the kind of effect that's inspired me for this piece. So I'm happy not to completely block it in. It's going to be relatively translucent. So then when I go back and do the layers underneath the water, you're still going to maintain that sense, perhaps that it's a little bit translucent, transparent, and you can see through the water, obviously. So I'm concentrating the white kind of color near the top and then so just pulling it down slightly. So I'm not pressing on all the way down here. I'm just using sort of gentle patchy kind of motions with this. Maybe that's the first kind of step. I may go back in and break some of that with, with kind of rocks that interfere with some of that flow. But just the general first impression of the first stage of the waterfall is fine. I'm going to do more to this section down here. Now this is definitely one of my more complex landscape tutorials. There are a variety of, of different complexity um, in my, my landscape tutorials. If I did them all very, very basic, then it's really not going to help people grow. So if you're finding this one quite tough, I've done quite a lot of tutorials. So you can go through the other ones and find something that perhaps is going to be a more you know, useful starting point for your particular stage. But I do like to choose ones that will push myself and stretch my own abilities. If I just stick to the safe ones, yeah, I could do loads of tutorials that are pretty similar, a bit too samey. I want to create things that are going to be a challenge for myself and therefore a challenge for, for my viewers as well. So if I ha perhaps for the kind of mid section here, I've just made the brush slightly bigger so I can get some real softening of those kind of lines that I've put in. And I may do the same for up here as well. There's going to be some sections where there's just a lot of water coming down in that area. I'm still not using the whitest of colours so I can go back over some of these and add even more white into that as well because I still have the absolute white. Although even that is not an absolute white if I look at it on the colour disc but it's very close to it. And we're going to have some kind of area down here where the water is kind of settling maybe a little bit more at this stage before presumably maybe we have more drops and cascades out of sight in the scene as well. Okay, so I'm going to go to that darkest colour again, pretty much black. I'm going to go to the next layer down from that where I was using the lighter colour to add highlights to the rock. And I'm going to stick with the same medium airbrush just because I'm still trying to sort out some of these shapes of the rocks. So I have areas where I have highlights and I also need to go back in and perhaps suggest some areas of the rocks where there are shadows too. I hope you appreciate that um, sometimes with these kind of tutorials as such, um, they're going to be more walkthrough type of paintings really. Sometimes it's easy to break down exactly how you would do this kind of thing and sometimes you just have to show the process and kind of explain it as you go. And this is one of those examples. There's not always a quick fix for this kind of thing. Sometimes, you know, for the more advanced kind of pieces, you just have to find your own way a little bit with it. But hopefully having some kind of walkthrough like this will make the process easier if you have a go at doing it yourself. So I'm very much trying to create some areas where there's real kind of a shifting tone here. So some areas are going to be dark and some areas are going to be the light and then some areas are going to be just angular with other strange colors coming in there. But again, I'm trying to keep that kind of angular quality to these. Now, if I was just slavishly sticking to one particular kind of image, this would actually probably be easier, but I'm trying to show the process rather than just copying. Because sometimes if you copy, then 
it's very difficult to break it down into a systematic kind of method like this. Um, but I'm trying to show it kind of, you know, a little bit more broken down into its different stages, really. I know when I'm, if I'm copying from an image, then sometimes I might start in an area and I'm getting to super detail in that area, and then it just sort of builds out from that. Whereas this, I'm trying to build it up in complexity as I go. So I'm trying to affect the whole image a step at a time, which is not necessarily the, the way that I would work, like I say, if I was copying from a photograph completely. So I've been using them as inspiration, but this is, by no means an exact copy of any one of the images that I've been looking at. It's a kind of amalgamation of two or three, but none of the shapes, none of the formations are a copy. So that makes it more challenging, but also more interesting. Okay, I think what I'd like to do is go back onto my tree layer and start working on them a little bit more. So perhaps what I'll do is, just because some of the layers that I've been working on perhaps now have obscured parts of the trees, I'm just going to move them to the front and I'm going to erase any bits now that just don't make sense. But there is, isn't really a lot of them that don't at this point, so that's fine. Um, I'm going to go back to my tree colours. I'm going to pick the lightest colour. I'm going to stick to the medium airbrush and I'm just going to start using it to place in a suggestion of some of the, the tr tree texture here now. So I'm using the kind of direction of the, the tree trunk. I'm just doing some dashes. I'm not going to get overly bogged down in the, the texture for this, but I'm just creating a series of curves, really, that go in the general direction of the tree trunk. So again, I'm going to use a variety of the colors. I'm going to have some sort of green textures coming through there as well. So maybe along the edge of the tree, we're going to have a really nice sort of green coming through there. Might even go to one of the darker greens for that to really make it contrast and stand out because this is a relatively foreground tree so we're going to get a real contrast of, of different lights and dark areas on it. Go back to the grey colour, keep adding it in different areas so it's not always going to be in the centre. Don't make the mistake of, of putting the highlights always in the centre. I mean it's a useful way sometimes of describing a kind of tube shape but actually trees that are always quite work like that. Sometimes you get all the, the kind of lighter colors. It's not all just about light hitting the tree and reflecting off it. Sometimes it's the actual colors that appear on the tree. So you might have a concentration of moss perhaps on one edge of the tree and then you know you're gonna see the edge of the tree looking lighter even when perhaps it's more in the shade. So vary it up a little bit. I right, to go into make this tree a little bit darker and then I can add some lighter highlights more to it in fact. So go to the colors along here. I've got a nice green that I can now use on this tree. In fact, I'm going to go for the one down here instead. It wasn't intended for the tree, but like I say, these colors are kind of going across the different areas. So again, I'm using this to create some broken texture on the tree. So I can use it on both the trees can also use it on the rocks later on. So I'm going to use that black colour just to create some more texture on some of these trees as well. Okay, so I'm going to go back to uh, a previous layer that was the rock layer and I'm going to really start adding some highlights on now. So um, there's a the colors along here and I'm going to go for this lightest color here. I'm, I'm going to use this now to really start adding in some strong highlights on the tops of these kind of rock shapes. So I think what I'd like to start doing on my rock layer now is adding some suggestion of moss. So I'm going to use the rusted decay brush that's within the industrial section, which sounds a bit strange for this kind of purpose, but I'm using some of the greens that are along here and maybe some of the greens that are along there as well. So I'm gonna go for this middle green in this section and I'm gonna use it to create maybe a base green and then I'm gonna use that as a a nice little surface to then add some fresher kind of greens coming through for the, the moss. 
So I do want some areas of the rocks to look like they're overgrown and some areas to look like they're kind of exposed and they're kind of jarring. So we want a combination of the two for this particular scene. And I'm going to go to my more vibrant green here, now the third one along, again with this same brush. And I'm just going to start using a more kind of stippling effect. So I'm just doing kind of dots almost really, almost like pointillism. Maybe some areas it can, where it gets more highlights, it's going to band together. More like it hits it perhaps, it's all going to cluster together that texture. But when we get more in the shadow, it's just going to start breaking apart. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to this layer, layer four. Now, I've realized now that I'm kind of fighting against that layer a little bit. So what I'm gonna do with that layer is I'm actually going to darken it. So I can go to my adjustments, hue saturation, and I can actually darken it a little bit. And I think it's just gonna help lift some of the details. So it, currently it's kind of there. I just wanna take it down a small amount um, and it's just gonna create some more of those shadows, more of that contrast that I'm looking for really. I'm going to go to that kind of black color. I'm going to use that now as well. Make sure I go back to my moss layer. So I've got the highlights on the stone and the moss and things like that. So I'm using this black color now to really start bringing in some darker highlights as well, or darker contrast rather. Just to raise the tree where perhaps it's being a nuisance and interfering with the rock structure. So I can use this particular brush to just create a slightly more kind of painterly look. I'm adding texture. It's not going to be a photographic kind of texture when you zoom in. It's going to be very painterly of this particular piece. And sometimes that's the effect that is, is best for a piece of work, um, especially with the time constraints, because generally speaking with these tutorials, I'm gonna spend roughly about an hour, maybe a little bit more than an hour, piecing them together. And you've got to work with the, the time constraints. If I wanted to do something that was way more photographic, then realistically I would allow myself more time for that. Um, I'm gonna to go to my water layer now. I'm gonna use the absolute kind of white color but I'm not going to use this textured brush. I'm going to go back to my airbrush, stick to the medium airbrush, turn the size of it down and the opacity down. I'm just going to use it now just to really pick out some of the, the top highlights of this water. Okay, I'll come back to the water maybe a little bit later. I'm gonna go back to my kind of rock layer, just looking to create some more broken texture perhaps. And I'm gonna turn the size of this brush down. I'm gonna stick with the airbrush. It's always a kind of trusted layer really, just to start to add in some, maybe some finer details, splits in the rock, that kind of thing. Now, in fact, what I'm planning to do is I'm gonna create some kind of leaf, fallen leaves, so I want to do some darker leaves at the top, but I also want some of them to be on the ground. So I'm gonna go back to my um, retro brush, the rad brush, and I've got this color down, um, down here, which is kind of an orangey color. And I'm going to use that now just to create a, a suggestion rather that there are some of these leaves down here in, in sort of anywhere where they may have just generally kind of collected. Most of them are gonna get washed away in the water, but just here and there, they may start to collect. So we've obviously got the moss, which is the green colors, and that's not really going to change color. But then you've got a suggestion of the kind of leaves that may have collected in addition to that. So I'm not gonna go overboard with that, but I'm now gonna create another layer. I'm gonna put this on top, and I'm gonna use this layer to start adding some of the more vibrant colors that we may see in the foliage at the top. So we've still got all these leaves perhaps that are still attached to the trees and we're going to start creating those now. So I've got this on this really quite strong red, put the opacity somewhere in the middle and I'm just being careful. I'm just sort of dabbing it on. You can very easily go too far with this type of color at this stage. So I'm just trying to go easy with it really. So 
and down, add some more in the kind of distance. So I've got different types of red. I've done some of the most vibrant. I'm going to come back to that one. I'm going to use perhaps a slightly more subdued one in the large areas as well. So I'm doing some of the leaves perhaps that cut across and in front of many of these branches. Sort of clusters again, this general kind of, maybe a kind of sweeping direction for some of these. Maybe turn the size of the brush up in places. I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to put this one underneath the tree layer and I'm going to start piecing in some of those colours in the background too. So I'm going to turn the size of the brush down a little bit and the opacity down a little bit and I'm going to start just applying them generally in the background here. So they're going to go behind some of these trees. Let me go back to my orange as well and just sort of mix them in a little bit. It's quite an expressive piece this one. It's, there's no real precision with it in like some of my other tutorials you get very definite shapes very definite forms for this one it's more suggestive of the kind of colors and the environment it's not pinning it down in quite the same extent as perhaps some of my other ones do and you know it's quite nice to just vary up the style a little bit keeping it quite rough i don't have to worry too much about the tree branches or the tree trunks because they're on a, a layer that's further forward so I can just go a bit full on with the colours, maybe create some even darker colours that are going to go in the background here. Now I'm not going to unfull opacity so it doesn't matter too much. I'll go back to my top layer now and maybe I can start adding some more features that are going to maybe cut in front of the branches again. So maybe some dark, that real dark red that I've got here, I can use that to really cut in front of some of these areas. Now looking at the tree layer, I think the whole of the tree layer, again, sometimes you go along and you realize that the levels are not quite right now that you've got everything else in. So I'm gonna make them a little bit darker. I don't wanna go too far because they're gonna look wrong in the distance, but just a little bit darker than they were. And that generally puts them a little bit better in the landscape. I'm gonna go back to my rock layer, which is further down here. And I think the rocks are the areas that need a little bit more work. I think they need, honestly, some more highlights. Now I've got my grey colours here, but I think it might actually go for some of the lightest blue. Now it's not going to be for the water, but nevertheless there might be just some areas on the top of the rocks that somehow pick up the kind of same kind of light that the, uh, the water does. Again, we're going to have areas that have been splashed, so they're going to be in places just as reflective as the actual water is too. Maybe for the more distant rocks, maybe they're going to reflect a little bit more of the kind of light from the sky actually. So I might use some of this yellow and they can pick up a hint of that for the top, not too much. Just maybe exaggerates the sense that there's a glow coming from up there. Go back to my tree layer, go to my grey colour. Now I appreciate I've probably not used all these colours um, and that's just the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you have a colour palette and you don't really don't use them. I've not rehearsed this particular tutorial. And because it's one of the more complex ones that I've tried to do, and I'm just finding my way with it a little bit. Now, sometimes, and I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that are fans of uh, Bob Ross tutorials. And obviously, I think most people that do tutorials of this type owe a debt to his kind of techniques and his style. But even with the great and late Bob Ross, there were some of his tutorials where you'd have to say, well, it's not your best painting Bob you know he sometimes it really works and it's just magical and other times you could see him actually struggling with it and actually I think this is one that I've struggled with a little bit so I really am pushing myself on this one it's not a kind of scene that I've done before but it's been interesting to really push it a little bit and see what we can come up with so I'm just going to create a last couple of features on here before I call it today so I'm going to create some things that maybe are interfering with the water little areas that stick out more I can only hope that it is refreshing to see that, you know, everyone does struggle. 
And if I spent another several hours on this, I should be able to claw back the painting and, and get it to a stage where I'm quite happy with it actually. But I'm not going to do that on this tutorial. I'm going to just accept it as it is for today. And we're about 70% happy with it, I think. It's getting there. Uh, I'm using some of this black color just to place in some further highlights. And I think maybe that's what it needs. Sometimes you need to stop thinking about it and just start going at it really. Uh, placing in some of the, the things that you know should be there. And I think that is beginning to pull it together a little bit better now. Just needs more texture, more kind of dark sections, more light sections, a little bit of playing around with it. Probably would make it into a, a, a painting I'd be a lot happier with. But painting art is a very frustrating process. I hope that if there's nothing else taken home from today's lesson, it is the fact that it is a struggle. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how many years of experience you have as an artist. There's always gonna be days that you just struggle with what it is you're trying to actually achieve. And I'm not totally unhappy with this piece, but it's been a struggle. Okay. So I'm going to leave it there for today. I hope that it's been um, interesting. I hope it's been educational to watch the process. Um, I hope you've managed to see a few techniques that are going to help you in your painting in the future. Do remember to subscribe. There is a link down in the description for my Patreon if you're interested in supporting me over there. Otherwise, check out my other videos, my other playlists, and I shall catch you back here very soon.